Hey guys, Flatpak Effects here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this iPhone swipe transition. Now, I've included this free phone clip that you can download in the description below, and once you've imported that, I'm just going to right click and say new comp from selection. So the next step is I want to drag in our first image here. So I'm going to drag our first image here on top of our iPhone clip, and I'm going to scale this down so that it roughly fills over the top of our screen here, like so. Then with that layer selected, I'm going to come up to layer and down to pre-compose. Now I've simply named this one holder and I need to make sure that leave all attributes is selected and then hit okay. Now when I actually double click to open up that composition, you can see we now have our image laid out in that timeline. This video is created by flatpackeffects.com. A lot goes into learning animations, motion graphics, and ultimately mastering your skills. Flatpackeffects.com gives you access to hundreds of free tutorials, as well as an extensive range of high quality After Effects templates so you can develop and master your animation skills. Join our growing community of over 20,000 people. Use your link in the description below to check it out today. Now the next step is we actually want to track that image onto our iPhone screen. So we're going to come back to our main clip here and I'm simply going to drag this holder underneath my iPhone clip. Now I've already covered many ways on how we can actually track an iPhone screen in previous tutorials. So in this one, I thought we'd actually use the 2D tracker that's built into After Effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my layer, going to come up to window, and I'm going to make sure that the tracker is activated. And what I actually want to do is we want to track the motion. Now also want to make sure that rotation and scale are also selected here. Now the main thing to remember here is we can't actually track where our finger crosses over the screen. So we need to avoid this area of the screen. I'm going to make my first tracker just slightly larger and I'm going to drag this one up and pick a point right up here. Then I'm going to drag my second tracker and I want to try and get this as close to the bottom as I can. So now I'm happy with this, I'm actually going to start the track forward. Now you can see I'm watching for these two tracks here to make sure that they're staying in that same position as we move forward. Now you can see as soon as we got to this point the tracks actually started to slip and that's okay because we're not actually going to track the last piece of this. We're actually going to do that manually a bit later. So now we've got our tracking information we need to apply this to a null object. So what I'm simply going to do is right click and create a new null and with that phone clip selected again I want to come down here and hit edit target. Now I want to make sure that this is selected as the null that we just created and then hit OK. Once I've done that I can simply hit apply and it's going to ask if I want to apply the X and Y and I hit OK. So the next thing we want to do is link our image holder to that null. So what we can do is just come down to our holder here and I'm going to take the pick whip and pick whip it to that null object. Now when we play through you can see that it's actually stuck to that phone screen. But the next step is we actually want to remove that blue from our screen. So what I'm going to do is take my iPhone clip here, I'm going to come up to effect, down to keying, and I want to select the key light 1.2. Then I'm simply just going to click on my screen to remove that blue. I'm just simply just going to change this to be screen matte, and I want to come down to my screen matte settings and just adjust the white and the black. So I'm going to bring the black up and I'm going to bring that white down. Now the last step to this is we actually want to just mask out those extra edges here. So with that holder layer selected, I'm going to go to my pen tool by hitting G on the keyboard and I want to draw a mask so it runs around the outside of this phone. So something like that. Now the next problem here is you'll see at the end, because we didn't complete that track, the actual track slips and we're going to just fix that up manually. So what I'm going to do is go over until the track actually stops working, which is about here. And I'm gonna select my null here and hit U on the keyboard to bring up all those keyframes. And I just wanna select those last few keyframes that didn't work there and just remove them. Now for the last part of this, what we're going to do is actually just animate those missing keyframes. So with that null selected, what I'm going to do is just drag this down so that it lines up with my screen here. And if you need to adjust any of the scale or rotation, you can simply do that by just dragging up or down on any of those. 
Now the other thing I want to do while we're doing this is actually turn on motion blur. So I'm going to come over here to turn on motion blur for the composition and for our holder layer. And we can just readjust anything that's not working here for us. Now a little trick here is because it moves so fast, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's all about just trying to get a really rough point so that it lines up nicely when we play through. Okay, so the next step is we actually want to add our background images to line up with our images that are shown on the phone. So what we're going to do is select our holder composition, come up to edit and down to duplicate. Then with that bottom holder selected, we're gonna come down to the mask settings and just delete that. Then we're going to scale this image up and just reposition it. So once we've roughly got a position where we want it, all I need to do is select that layer, come up to effect, down to blur and sharpen, and add the Gaussian blur. Now I'm gonna drag mine up to around 45, or whatever you prefer. Now the other thing we need to do here is it's still also referencing that null object. So we want to come over to the parent and link, and we want to set this to be none. Okay, so now we've got everything in the right position. The next step is we actually want to add the swipe transition. So I'm going to move my playhead here until I line up with the first swipe transition, which starts here. And I'm going to double click to open up that holder. Now what I can do is select my next image here and just simply drag it on top and line it up so it starts on that position. The other thing I can do is also just scale this up slightly. Then I'm going to come down here under the transform and create a position property for the start. Then I'm going to go back to my main composition and I want to go across to where the animation or the finger swipe actually stops, which is about here. And I'm also going to create a keyframe for that position as well. Now, if I go back to my first position, I'm simply just going to drag this off the screen to somewhere about here. Then I'm going to take both those keyframes. I'm going to right click and create an easy ease. And I also want to make sure that motion blur is on for this composition and also for those layers. Now, if I come back to the main composition and play through, you can see that we have a nice swipe transition there. So now it's just a matter of repeating this process as many times as you like to match up with the footage that we've shot. So I'm going to go across to my next swipe transition, which starts about here, and drag in my next image. Now, because we've already created the position keyframes from before, all I need to do is simply copy those and paste them onto the start of this clip. Now I'm just going to come across and do this one last time for my final image here. So I drag it into the position I need. I can rescale it slightly and copy and paste these position keyframes and add the motion blur to that layer. Now one little final tip here is at the very end, as the phone actually pulls down, we actually want to change the focus from the phone to the background. So what we're going to do is as that phone starts to come down, I'm simply going to come down to our background holder layer here. And if I come down to the effect controls for the Gaussian blur, I can animate the blur from 45 to around zero. I can also right click on those, create an easy ease. And now we have our finished iPhone swipe transitions. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more After Effects tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.